Let's talk about the derivation of formula for the magnitude of the resultant and the direction of the resultant. Before we start with the calculations, as a student, you should know that we'll be using parallelogram law of vector addition in order to add the vectors. Triangle law of vector addition will also give the same result, although the calculations will be a, uh, a bit tedious. So, proceeding forward, first of all, I'll choose the two vectors uh, that I'll add using parallelogram law. And over here, I choose these two vectors a and b. Now you can notice the modulus symbol across the vector variable I have put. Uh, I have done so because I am more interested in the magnitudes of these vectors. Now the angle between these two vectors is angle theta as shown here. And to add them using parallelogram law, I have to complete the parallelogram by drawing lines parallel to individual vectors. So over here, I have completed the parallelogram. Now to find the resultant vector, all I have to do is join the body diagonal that passes through the point of coincidence of vectors. So my s vector becomes my resultant vector. Now over here, you can see this angle alpha that I have drawn. This angle alpha will give me an indication about the direction of the resultant vector. How exactly will it do that? I know the direction of a vector already and then I will know the value of angle alpha after calculations. Once I do that, I can exactly tell the direction of s vector as being angle alpha away from the known vector a. So carrying forward, in order to find the magnitude of this s vector, I'll be doing a small construction. Uh, please pay attention. I'll be extending this line a vector forward and I'll be dropping a perpendicular from this point down to that line. So over here, I have extended this line forward and I've dropped a perpendicular from this point down to that line. So over here, we have got this angle as 90 degrees clearly, correct? Now, in this parallelogram, I can say that opposite sides must be equal. So the length of this dotted line must be same as the length of this original vector. So over here, I can say because they are opposite sides of parallelogram, the length of this is nothing but modulus of B vector. Now, the opposite sides of parallelogram are also parallel to each other. So in this case, the, these two lines will be parallel to each other and this line will act like a transversal to them. So these two angles will be equal because there will be nothing but corresponding angles to each other. Now in this triangle, if you carefully see, it's a right angle triangle first of all and I will uh, apply the formula of sin theta in order to calculate the length of this side. So I can say that sin theta is nothing but perpendicular upon hypotenuse. And in that situation, perpendicular is nothing but hypotenuse into sin theta. So the length of this side is nothing but hypotenuse, which is modulus of B vector into sin of this angle theta. Now, similarly, I can find the length of this base as well by applying the cos theta formula. Cos theta is base upon hypotenuse. So base is nothing but hypotenuse into cos theta. So over here, I can see the length of base is nothing but modulus of b cos theta. Now, if you remember, we are supposed to calculate the length of this s vector. So for that, the most optimum triangle will be this triangle A, B, C. Now in this triangle, if you carefully see, I know the length of this side, I know the length of this side, and my hypotenuse is the s vector. So I can directly apply the Pythagoras theorem formula and calculate. So considering triangle A, B, C now, in triangle ABC, I'll apply the Pythagoras theorem formula. So I can say S square is equal to A plus B cos theta whole square base square plus B sin theta whole square perpendicular square. Now, if I just open the brackets and proceed with the calculations, the result that I'll obtain is S is equal to square root of A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. So with this equation, I have obtained the magnitude of my resultant. Now, I am also interested in the direction of my resultant, which means I am also interested in the value of this angle alpha. So in this triangle, once again, if I calculate the value of tan of alpha, which is nothing but perpendicular upon base, I can say tan of alpha is nothing but b sin theta perpendicular upon a plus b cos theta, the base. So over here, I can simply answer my angle alpha as tan inverse of b sin theta upon a plus b cos theta. I hope this is very, very clear to the students. So taking the original vector diagram once again, I have my A vector, I have my B vector, 
they are added to uh, give s vector which is my resultant over here the sum vector the the magnitude of the sum vector is square root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta the direction or the uh, or the value of angle alpha is nothing but tan alpha is equal to b sin theta upon a plus b cos theta these results are very very important uh, for vectors topic and every student must memorize it properly uh, some important points about the derivation of this formula the magnitude of resultant depends on two factors first is the magnitudes of original vectors the modulus of a and the modulus of b values and the angle between the original vectors which means the angle theta because in the formula of s we have a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta terms so we have dependence on a dependence on b and dependence on angle theta the sign convention for the angle must be chosen uh, properly which is anti clockwise direction is positive and clockwise direction is negative the sign convention that we are using here is exactly the same as what you have learnt in uh, trigonometry in mathematics avoid choosing reflex angle between the vectors because if you remember we also have another angle defined uh, between two vectors we can choose that as well for our calculations but it will just make our uh, work tedious but if at all that angle is chosen the sign convention must be applied correctly i hope this is very very clear to all of you thank you